Hey guys, Tony here, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at an incredible 4K movie player from Zapiti, which is designed specifically to give you the convenience of Netflix and streaming with the performance of a 4K Blu-ray player. Now, before we get into the video, I wanted to say a big thank you to Zapiti for sending this in for review. It's not a sponsored video, and all opinions and feedback are mine and mine alone, based on the extensive testing I have done over the last couple of weeks. I will say that I have quite a bit of experience with these types of devices, having tested out other 4K players such as the Zidu range of video players, as well as having a pretty extensive NAS setup which I use to house all of my 4K rips. This isn't going to be a comparison video between the Zidu, as I like to dedicate my videos to the product I'm reviewing. But if there is enough interest, I may consider doing a comparison review, so why not leave me a comment down below letting me know if this is something that you'd be interested in. So let's not waste any more time, let's get into the video. So before I get into the review of the Zapiti, it's important to understand why you may want one, especially when there are so many streaming services right now where you can literally watch any movie you like. Why would you want to buy a 4K disc and go to the trouble of ripping it and then also buying a player like the Zapiti to play it? This type of 4K movie player doesn't play it from a physical disc. It's designed to play from a digital source such as an ISO or MKV rip of a movie or TV show, which can be stored either internally inside the player on a hard drive or from a USB disc directly plugged in, or in my case, from a NAS or network attached storage. If you have a home theater or media room, you may want to get the best possible audio and video quality, and to achieve that, you really need to be using physical media. Streaming services will be compressing the audio and the video stream, so you will not be getting the best quality available. And for me, that's leaving performance on the table. You also get the convenience of scrolling through your library to find something to watch, as well as enjoy the posters, listen to the musical score, watch the trailer and see other information about the movie before deciding what to watch. I will go over the pros and cons of this type of setup at the end of the video, but it's best to go through and watch this video first so that you can get an understanding of the Zapiti player and the setup needed so it will make more sense to you. So Zapiti have a number of models available at various price points. I will send the reference edition, which is second to the top tier model. The top one being the signature and the main differentiation between them is a better power supply and internal audio hardware, especially relating to music. As I'm only interested in movies, not music, the reference is the perfect player for my setup. I'll leave the specs up on the screen so you can pause the video to take a look, but the hardware is pretty powerful and gives a lag-free experience and also for playback. The reference measures in at 43 centimeters wide by 11 centimeters high and 34.3 centimeters deep and comes with rack ears so you can mount it inside your AV cabinet or you can simply leave it on a shelf if you so desire. There are a number of inputs and outputs along the back, including HDMI inputs and outputs for both audio and video, a number of USB ports, including 3.1 and USB Type-C, and of course the balanced XLR outputs for high quality playback for two channel music. The remote is one of the best that I've seen with nice tactile buttons which are backlit and easy to use. However, for me, I have to use the Harmony remote as my room is not in the same location as my rack, although there is a provided IR extender. Another cool feature is using your smartphone as a remote with the ability to use a wireless keyboard and mouse to control the player from your theater room. There are options for a number of other control systems like Control 4, Savant and Harmony as I just mentioned. I use my Harmony remote to dim the lights when I press play and turn them on when I press pause, which is a really nice feature to have with a smart control system. There is wireless as I just mentioned, as well as Bluetooth, so you have a number of ways to interact with the player. The Zapiti reference has a very premium look and feel with brushed aluminum all round, with a glass display on the left with an LCD. There is also a flap at the front, which allows you to access two drive bays with a combined storage capacity of 32 terabytes. This means that you can use the Zapiti network service to copy your movies to and from the device as well as share the movie 
service to other players around your home if you have them. The Zapedi is built on top of the Android operating system and has been designed to give great user experience so that when you sit down and watch a movie, you have a nice and convenient way to browse your library with a number of themes to choose from, although the full range of themes do come with an additional cost. My favorite theme is Aurora as I find it focuses on a nice clean interface, making movie thumbnails and posters the center of attention. So the Zapedi reference supports Dolby Vision, HDR10, and multiple frame rates such as 24, 50, and 60 frames per second. So no matter what you're watching, the Zapedi can match the frame rate and send that signal to your projector. The reference can also do upscaling for 1080p content, and there is also an option to force 4K on all content so that you can take advantage of that upscaling. When I was testing this out I was really finding it hard to tell the difference between what I was watching was a standard Blu-ray. It really felt more like a 4K movie. The Zapedi can also support a number of audio formats, the best one being Bitstream, which will pass object-based sound formats such as Dolby Atmos and DTSX to your processor to let it do the heavy lifting. Like the Zapedi, I have another French product in my home cinema, being the Trinov Altitude 16 processor. And pairing with the Zapedi, this gives you literally the closest thing to audio and video perfection that you can get in a home theater. Trinov have also provided a number of trailers so that you can check them out on the main screen even if you don't own a Trinov. I also have the JVC and P5 in my room with a 9.4.6 Crick speaker setup, so I'm taking full advantage of the Zapedi's ability to send reference level audio and video to my room. I'm about to do a full tour on my updated room, so if that's something you'd like to see, make sure you hit the subscribe button and tick the bell so that you don't miss it. It's going to be one of the biggest videos I've ever done on my channel. For my personal setup, I am using two Synology NAS, and this allows me to have as much scalable storage as necessary for this setup. Going over my network is fast and lag free and gives the experience you would expect from having discs inside the player. I was experiencing lag loading the thumbnails because the way the Zapedi video player works is that you create collections and then inside the collections you add the source location of all your movies and TV shows. The main issue at the time was that I was creating these collections on the Zapedi cloud, which is a great way to keep a record of your collection. While initially I felt that this was adding some unnecessary complexity, as I'm used to my Zidu player which just just works without any kind of authentication, similar to a standard Blu-ray player, the Zapedi has to log you into the cloud, verify you and load your collection data, which does take a few extra seconds. It did annoy me at first, but when you realize that it's for your protection, it became easy to go along with. What I did to avoid some of this lag by using the Zapedi Cloud, because I didn't have any internal disks inside the Zapedi, was to install the Zapedi server on my Synology NAS. Now this sounds more complicated than it is, and they have a convenient guide on how to do it using Docker. You create a container on your NAS, assign some permissions, and then when you turn on your Zapedi player, you can create and connect to a collection on your NAS, so it pulls your collection data and thumbnails at lightning speed. I was going to get the Zapedi NAS in as well, but it's being used by the local distributor at the moment, but the Zapedi NAS is a storage device with a ripper that will take your physical media, rip it automatically, and add it to your library. This is a far side easier than my method, but as I have a NAS and storage setup, this method works for me just fine. I will leave links to the Zapedi NAS down in the description as well as to all the other players. So the interface is quite nice and clean, having the option to go in and view your library quickly and easily. You first need to add the file locations to the collection and then give your Zapedi time to read and catalogue everything as well as to match the titles for each movie. For my substantial collection, it took around 30 minutes to catalog everything. This is where I saw a distinct advantage with the Zapedi, and that is that the matching system is really accurate. If it doesn't know what the movie is based on the file name from the rip, you can easily go in and rematch them. And you can do this from your iPhone or from your remote control, and this is a really important step to make sure that you have all of your content properly matched. So once that's done, you can go through and enjoy the artwork and the slick experience of browsing your collection. You can go in and change posters and backgrounds, but for the most part, the ones that are chosen are pretty good. One of the latest features is the animated backgrounds in the title screen. On mine, it did take a little while to load them, even with gigabit internet. I had to wait for them, but it's a nice bonus once they're loaded. They show immediately when you go into the movie again. Now, one of the little glitches I noticed was that not all the movie's metadata was loaded automatically. So either I had to wait or I had to go into the settings for the movie and pick one attribute, which seemed to then trigger a recognition process. 
not a huge deal, but something that I noticed with my setup and it was confirmed to me by a couple of my home theater buddies who also have Zapedes. This does affect the filtering if you're looking for a specific type of movie like a 4K. Some of them may be missing, so it's important to check your collection to make sure. Overall though, I found the Zapiti reference to be a very capable and smooth experience when it comes to viewing my content, and I've been using it to watch some of my favorite movies. While I play some demos, I'll give my feedback on the experience. While I can't show you all of the violent scenes, I found that John Wick looked absolutely spectacular playing back through my JVC MV5 and my Zapiti. There was a lot of detail in the dark scenes and the colors really popped. Now, a lot of that can be attributed to the JVC and the frame adapt tone mapping, as well as the HD Fury VR room unlocking Dolby Vision, but Zapiti themselves told me that an upgrade within the reference model to help with the fidelity of the image, something to do with better power supply and other internal components. One of the best scenes to demo is the opening of Passengers, and it certainly didn't disappoint. The space scenes felt truly dark to me, and the playback was super smooth, and it felt very cinematic. This is exactly what you want from a home theater experience. The other scenes like in the bar were sensational, very vibrant and colorful. Another great scene to test is the beginning of Maleficent next to the stream with the pink flowers. And it's just a beautiful scene and looks great. I found the playback very smooth and glitch free. The scene where Bilbo sticks his head through the trees and sees the glorious sunset is another reference scene for me. This is just a great test of dynamic range, detail and color reproduction. I've watched it on Amazon Prime and there is no comparison playing it back on the Zapiti. I'll leave the timestamps to these demo scenes down in the description. So time to give you my candid thoughts on what I like and what I didn't like about the Zapiti reference. Starting with the design and form factor, it looks every bit the premium product that it is, with brushed aluminium all around with glass front for the digital display. Coming with rackies meant that it could be mounted properly and allows for airflow as it doesn't need to be on a shelf. Having two drive bays is also a big positive for those that don't have the investment capital for a NAS setup. Conveniently toolless as well, you can slip the drives in and off you go. In terms of performance, I found the experience very slick and smooth once it's loaded up. While I'm not a fan of most of the themes, I think Aurora and Purple are very nice and allow for an enjoyable experience scrolling through your library. The settings and menu system is very well thought out and intuitive. I was able to make the necessary changes in the UI very quickly and easily. I also like that you can make changes to the library and the metadata as well as on your mobile phone app. You can even scroll your library on your phone and then push the movie to play on the big screen. I was also impressed with the matching engine compared to my Zidu player. The success rate for the Zapiti is much higher and it was very easy to fix things and fix mistakes. Now, when it comes to duplicates, initially I found it annoying, but then I realized that there was a positive the Zapiti will show individual thumbnails for each movie. So if you have a Blu-ray and a UHD, they will show together and then you can make the decision on the fly whether to delete the movie from the collection. I ended up cleaning up my library by finding duplicates. When it comes to TV shows, there is an auto play function, which is pretty cool. So instead of having to go out and back in, it will auto play the next episode, which I can appreciate. There is also a trailer section to the player where you can upload your own trailers or advertisements and manually or automatically add them to a movie. This could be a bit annoying, but if you're having a movie night, it could be a cool thing to have before you watch a movie with your friends. Anyone that watches my channel knows the home theater experience is really important to me. So little things like the library display, the thumbnails, the posters, they have a high focus. And I enjoy things like the animated titles and the expansive wallpaper displays. Overall, I am pretty positive about the Zapiti reference as a player for my home theater. Now to the negatives or things that I feel could be improved. The first one is the loading screen every time you go to make a change or go into the library. Now I understand why it has to do it, but it would be nice if it happened in the background. I find it a little jarring and while it's something that I'm now used to, it could be something that could be made to look a little bit more elegant. Another thing that I think could be done better is the way the collections work. It would be nice if there was an automatic behind the scenes sync to the cloud rather than have to manage and maintain and switch between the collections from the NAS to the cloud. I know a lot of people have complained to me about the cloud requirement and having to go through a lengthy offline process to be 
able to watch movies if the Zapedi servers go offline. They can't watch movies, so I'm sure this is something that Zapedi are aware of. Again, I understand that this is a coding and architecture decision that Zapedi have made. I'm just expressing my opinion based on my experience with other players and devices. I know that Zapedi has a way to record its own data, including watch data. However, I think if there was an option to synchronize your playback history with something like Tracked, that would be a really cool thing, as I do it with my other players and streamers. Not a negative as such, but a really nice to have. There isn't much negative to say about the Zapedi reference other than a few nitpicking quality of life improvements. I'm sure the engineers are working on these things all the time. So the most common thing people say to me about this setup is the cost and that it costs a lot of money to get the NAS and the player as well as having to buy all the discs and then the ripper and then taking the time to rip the collection and they don't feel that it's worth it. I don't really have much to argue here because it really comes down to your personal wants and needs. Someone like me who sees the value in the convenience of having their physical library at their fingertips will not really complain too much about the process. Some people do have massive libraries and that is a consideration in terms of physical storage needed. So sure, I get it, but for me, the investment was worth it. Buying a NAS as well as the storage can be quite expensive. However, if you get the reference and fill both drives with 16 terabyte disks, you can get 32 terabytes worth of movies, which is around 604k movies. So you don't need to get a NAS setup for this to work. Ripping your movies can be a chore, but I just took my time with it. And after a couple of weeks, I had my whole collection ripped. Any new movies that are now needed to be added, they just are like a one-off and they don't really feel like a chore to do. So I'm not saying that this method is for everyone. You may be happy with streaming from an Apple TV or using an Nvidia Shield with Kodi. That's totally fine. But I thought that I would address this in the video because it's a common comment that I get from people. Guys, honestly, just find a solution that works for you and enjoy your home theater. So pricing for the Zapedi reference is 1599 US with a signature coming in at $2,999 and the Neo coming in at $899. And these three models share the same chipset and processor. So the difference in price will come down to the form factor and the internal components such as the DAC and the power supply. But from all three, you should receive a similar experience. I will have links down in the description to where you can buy one as Zapedi do sell all around the world. If you have any questions, please drop them down below in the comments section and if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful why not hit the like button for me as it's the best way that you can support what i'm doing here on youtube i'd like to thank zapiti for sending the reference in for review i've really enjoyed my time with it and i look forward to watching more content with it very soon if you would like to see more content like this consider subscribing to the channel and ticking the bell i have a lot more videos coming very soon on my own 9.4.6 Cricks and Trinov Home Theatre. So make sure you stick around for those videos. If you're still watching, I appreciate your time and you'll catch me in the next video. Bye for now.